Good afternoon, everyone. The topic I'm going to talk about today is efficient and accurate WRP, SMT, saw duplicer EM simulation for module integration. My name is Hao Dong. The co-authors are Kevin, JV, and Tao. We are from Mobile Device Design Engineering in Povo, Apopka, Florida. In this presentation, at first, I will talk about the background and the motivations. Next, I will talk about the method to separate the filter and the limited designs and the issues. After that, I'm going to introduce the improved EM simulation method for filter and the limited designs. To understand better about the issues, we compare the E-field distribution for both cases. And then we use the similar method on band 8 design on the laminate. The last is the summary and the future work. Background and the motivation. Usually, we are doing the co-simulation with full EM simulation of the filter and the laminate. This method can catch all the parasitics. The plot at the bottom, sorry. The plot at the bottom left is the typical EM simulation setup. So we have the TX die, we have the IX die, and also we have the 3D SMD models on the laminate. The bottom right is, for example, band 20 isolation. The red curve is the simulation, and the black curve is the measurement. Simulation can match the measurement quite well. But sometimes, we need to separate the die and the limited design. The main reasons are field team and model team probably are different. They are using probably different EM tools. So it's difficult to use the full EM for this case. Second, if we can find an efficient and accurate way to separate the filter and the limited design, it will make things very simple. So we can design the filter by itself, and then combine the results with the laminate. We don't need to run the full EM. The, the full EM usually takes a long time. To do this, first we do the filter die simulation. So this plot shows the typical Corvo WIP SMT filter die. So we have the SMT pads. So when we do this die simulation, we add the perfect E below the filter die as the port reference. Then we define the ports, and in the die, we include the metal stack. The, the same thing we can do for the laminate. In laminate simulation, we add the PEC above the laminate as the port reference plan. Then we can add the 3D SMD models, and we define the ports like this. After we get the S parameters of the laminate and the die, we can assemble the results together to get the final duplex performance. The right plot shows the comparison of band 20 isolation. The black is the measurement. The red curve is the full EM simulation results when we use the full EM of laminate on the laminate. The field on the laminate. The blue curve is the combined EM simulation after we separate the filter and the laminate. So from this plot, we can find the discrepancies. For both 
isolation in the TX and IX bands. So what happened? So when we do when we separate the dye EM and the limited EM, we already remove the self-inductance due to the pot definition due to the ge geometry. And also we remove the extra capacitance induced by the PEC. And also we notice for the Corvo WLP SM, uh, SMT filter dye, it's different from the regular CSP dye. The main reason is usually for the CSP dye, we have a common ground plane. And for the Corvo filter dye, it's different. If, we, if you look at this one. So we have the SMT pads for the signal for the signal and also for the ground. So usually the ground pad, they are only connect to the single ground point in the die. So there's no common ground. So it, this makes it sensitive to the ground connection. So what we are doing here is consider try to add the common ground plane. So what we do is like this. In the filter die simulation, we define the we define the perfect E for the port reference, but we still we also add the PC block to connect the ground SMP pad to the PC. Then we can also remove the EM ports for the ground pad. We did the same thing for the limit EM. So we add the PC block, connect the perfect E to the laminate ground. Then we define the ports and also remove the ports for the ground pad. After doing this, we get the S parameters and uh, we can get to the final uh, performance of the duplexer. Here we look at the isolation because it's usually it's uh, it's very sensitive to the ground. So on the on this plot, the black is the measurement, the red is the full EM simulation. Here we put it here as a reference, and uh, the blue is the original EM simulation. We found the discrepancy, and the green one is by the new method. So we can find the isola uh, isolation in the in the in the check band can match quite well. And but the isolation here it's improved, but still we can we can find the simulation can not match the measurement very well, especially for the notch at eight hundred and thirty megahertz. The main reason for this, uh, what we are thinking is probably when we do we, when we are, when when we are using this method, the parasitics among the TX dye, IX dye, SMD, and also the laminate are missing. Probably it's from that. To understand better about the issues and the why we can improve the production of the isolation, we plot the E field for both cases. This, we excite, uh, the uh, field excitation is at the TX part, it's here, and uh, this is for the new method. And uh, also, this one, we, here is the PEC above the TX die. So what we found is, when we excite the TX part, the E field distribution is strong on the PC above the TX die. And also it couples to the IX die here. If you see closely, you can see some coupling to there. On the other hand, when we use the new method, we put some two ground blocks in the middle. This block provide a return pass and also reduce the coupling to the IX die. So from the field distribution, we can see almost nothing here. But please notice, this is not 
in apple to apple comparison. The main reason is when we do we are we are doing this, the for example, this that's our SMT pad for the TXI, it's grounded. And here there's a port. It's not grounded and it's terminated by 50 ohms. So it's not exactly the apple to apple comparison. But probably I can use this to explain why the original method cannot predict the isolation in the ice band quite well. Using the same method, we try to use on the other band. So there, here's another example. This is the eight, band 8 design on the laminate. It's totally different application. So in this case, we are doing uh, the simulation like this. But please notice, in this case, TX die and IX die are not next to each other. They are separated by the matching element. And also, in this case, I don't have to define a big PC block. I can just use a small one just for the ground pad. The left plot shows the comparison. Red is the full yen for this case, uh, filter on the laminate. And blue is the original yen simulation. We can see the discrepancy here. And uh, the green one is the new method. Can match the full EM simulation quite well. Here's the summary and the future work. The performance, especially the isolation of Corvo, WLP, SMT, saw duplexer is sensitive to the ground connection. The new method can predict isolation better compared to the older one. But please notice, the new method is limited by the laminate layout. And we also needed to verify the effectiveness of this method in more cases. That's all of my presentation. Any questions?